first contact between humanity and a galactic commonwealth occurred at a McDonald's in Boise, Idaho. This was not, as many species would later argue, because of any particular strategic or diplomatic significance. Rather, it was because Ambassador Tiltrix of the Xylaxes had picked up what they thought was a distress beacon, but turned out to be the particularly aggressive Wi-Fi signal from a 24-hour drive through The resulting chaos of first contact was somewhat dampened by the night shift manager, Dave Peterson, who simply shrugged and asked if they'd like to try the new spicy chicken sandwich. The Xylaxians, being a species that communicated primarily through bioluminescent patterns, took this as a sacred greeting ritual and responded by flashing their head crests in the pattern that roughly translated to medium fries and the Diet Coke. But it wasn't the fast food that would change the course of galactic history. No, that honor belonged to the humble potato. And, and these are uh, reproductive vessels? Ambassador Cuthrix asked, their sensory stalks quivering as they examined the brown, lumpy object in their appendages. Dr. Sarah Chen, Earth's newly appointed agricultural exchange officer, tried not to sigh. This was the fourth species this week to fundamentally misunderstand tubers. No, Ambassador, it's a potato. It's a root vegetable we eat. <sighs> the Ambassador's translator crackled. You consume reproductive vessels? Could you? They're not reproductive vessels, Sarah explained patiently. They're more like underground storage organs for the plant. This was, as it turned out, exactly the wrong thing to say. Catrix's sensory stalks went rigid. Storage organs. For what purpose? What ancient knowledge do they contain? Mostly starch? The ambassador dropped the potato, as if it had suddenly caught fire. Their voice took on a reverent tone that the translator barely managed to capture. The ancient ones stored their wisdom in these sacred vessels, hiding them beneath the earth until beings worthy of their knowledge would discover them. No, oh, they're, uh, they're, they're just, um... But Kai Thrix was already rushing out of the Earth Embassy's agricultural department, all four of their appendages gesturing in what Sarah would later learn was the Pradaxian sign for holy shit. Within three standard galactic weeks, the first church of the Holy Tuber had over seven million followers. They believe what? President Martinez pinched the bridge of her nose, staring at the report before her. Admiral Johnson cleared his throat. The productions have become convinced that potatoes are, and I quote, the dormant eggs of an elder god of infinite wisdom. They believe that, when properly awakened, each potato will reveal universal truths. And how exactly do they think these potatoes are supposed to be awakened? Well, ma'am, there seems to be three main theological schools of thought. The mashers believe that the knowledge can only be accessed by carefully crushing the potato to release its divine essence. The bakers insist that the truth must be slowly coaxed out through careful application of heat. And then there's the raw truthers, who think we've been corrupting the sacred messages by cooking them at all. The president stared at her coffee mug, likely wishing it contained something stronger. Please tell me this isn't causing diplomatic incidents. Admiral Johnson shuffled his papers uncomfortably. Well, the Varaxians have declared war on French fries, claiming they're a blasphemous desecration of holy relics. The Zolaxians have converted all their hydroponics base into potato worship chambers. And the Pradaxians, they've kind of started a pyramid scheme based on selling blessed seed potatoes. A pyramid scheme? They're calling it a divinity distribution network. Buy in with ten potatoes, recruit three more believers, get promoted to Archtuber of the Fifth Revelation. The Galactic Security Council emergency session was not going well. The humans are clearly hiding the truth. High priest catchworks and sensory stalks were practically tying themselves in knots with religious fervor. Why else would they have buried the sacred ones in dirt? They must be protected, preserved. Each holy vessel contains wisdom beyond mortal comprehension. Sarah Chen, who had somehow been promoted to Earth's chief potato diplomat, despite her increasingly desperate attempts to decline the position, raised her hand. We literally just grow them that way. They're food, nothing more. Blasphemy! shouted seventeen different species at once, their various universal translators creating a cacophony of outrage. Oh. Sarah tried again. Oh. 
I can prove they're just plants. I, I brought some potato seeds. The room erupted in chaos. Three species fainted. One declared immediate holy war. Two formed an alliance on the spot to protect what they now called the sacred spawn. In the back of the chamber, a Xylaxian was furtively trying to sell premium access to a potato enlightenment meditation circle. They had somehow acquired a crystal encrusted potato and were claiming it was the chosen one. Dave Peterson, the McDonald's manager who had inadvertently helped facilitate first contact, became an unwitting religious figure when security footage of him peeling potatoes for the morning hash browns went viral on the galactic net. The peelers, a splinter sect of potato worshippers, began claiming that the true path to enlightenment lay in releasing the sacred flesh from its earthly bonds. They set up monasteries dedicated to the solemn art of potato peeling, complete with ritualistic chanting and ceremonial vegetable peelers plated in precious metals. Dave just wanted to know if this meant he qualified for overtime. We may have a solution, Dr. Chen announced to the emergency task force, six months into what the media had dubbed the Great Tuber Tribulation. President Martinez looked up hopefully from what appeared to be her seventh cup of coffee that morning. Please tell me it doesn't involve actual divine intervention. Better, we're going to introduce them to sweet potatoes. The room fell silent. Admiral Johnson was the first to speak. You want to introduce a second holy vegetable to a galaxy that's already having a religious crisis over the first one? Sarah grinned. Exactly. The theological confusion should cause enough chaos in their doctrine that the whole movement might collapse under its own weight. Also, sweet potatoes aren't actually related to regular potatoes, which should really throw a wrench in their creation mythology. That's either brilliant or we're about to start an interstellar holy war. Well, not both. As it turned out, the introduction of sweet potatoes did indeed throw the Church of the Holy Tuber into crisis. The resulting theological schism spawned 47 new denominations, three potato-based constitutional monarchies, and a surprisingly successful fast food chain that specialized in spiritually enlightened tater tots. But the real breakthrough came when a young Pradaxian scientist, attempting to commune with a potato through chemical analysis, accidentally discovered that modified potato starch could be used to create incredibly efficient quantum computing matrices. The religious fervor gradually died down, as the galaxy realized that potatoes were in fact not mystical knowledge eggs, but rather the key to revolutionizing computer technology. Though some maintain that this merely proves the potato's divine nature through more scientific means. These days, the Earth Embassy maintains a careful stance of religious potato neutrality, though visitors can still spot the small shrine to the great McDonald's oracle, Dave Peterson, in the lobby. Dave himself declined the position of high profit and still works at the same McDonald's, though he did accept a part-time consulting gig as a spiritual advisor to three alien species. Sarah Chen went on to write a best-selling memoir titled How I Almost Started a Holy War with Root Vegetables and now teaches Xeno Agricultural Diplomacy at Harvard. Her first lesson always begins with the same warning. Before introducing any earth crop to alien species, Please check if they're prone to creating religions about food. I cannot handle another situation like the great Pastic prophecy of 2034. And as for the potatoes themselves, they remain blissfully unaware of their status as fallen deities, continuing to do what they've always done, providing sustenance, causing religious confusion, and occasionally revolutionizing quantum computing. The Galactic Commonwealth eventually established the Bureau of Theological Pro Prevention BTPP, to evaluate earth vegetables for potential religious significance before allowing their export. They're currently dealing with a minor crisis involving artichokes, but that's a story for another day. Addendum. The author would like to note that no potatoes were harmed in the making of this historical account, though several were briefly elevated to godhood against their will. The Great Pastor Prophecy of 2157 remains classified under Galactic Security Council Directive 7B23, Prevention of Carbohydrate-Based Cosmic Revelations.